The book of Revelation is unqualified genius. This is a truly marvelous literary work. Sometimes people look at the book of Revelation and they think it's just this wild apocalyptic vision with dragons tearing through the pages and demonic frogs hopping all over the place. Not so. The book of Revelation is clearly this incredible complex of Old Testament allusions and literary structure. Let me give you one example. Right now we're preaching through the book of Revelation and we've come to the seven letters to the seven churches. Now there's two structures happening at the same time that not a lot of people are aware of. First of all, across all seven letters, there is a chiasmic pattern. Now what exactly is a chiasmus? Well, we see it a lot in poetic literature, but a chiasmic pattern is one in which you have this structure, A, B, C, B, A. Or to say it another way, like something like one, two, three, four, three, two, one, right? So when you look at the seven letters, this chiasmic structure is somewhat obvious once you know what you're looking for. So the first letter and the last letter, those are the ones that receive the harshest rebuke. In fact, the church of Ephesus, the first one in Laodicea, they are on the brink of destruction because of their abandoning the faith or their first love, and at least in the case of the Ephesians and being in danger of being spit out of the mouth of Christ in the case of the Laodiceans. The next two churches, Church 2 and Church 6, those are in the strongest position. In fact, they receive hardly any rebuke at all, although nevertheless they still have tribulation and difficulties. And then churches 3, 4, and 5, those are the ones that sort of have a mix of commendation uh, and rebuke. They're just... Listen, so the point is that all seven churches need grace, right? They need the strengthening of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, but it's not immediately obvious until you begin to notice the sort of chiasmic structure written across all seven letters writ large. Now, within each letter, there's also a covenantal structure, and this you may not have noticed at first, but it's obviously there. Now, what is a covenantal structure? Well, in the ancient Near East, there was sort of a binding document of agreement between a greater lord and a lesser vassal state. It's called the Suzerainty Treaty or the Covenant. The Old Testament uses the word berit in the Hebrew or the New Testament uses the word diatheke at times to talk about this idea of a covenant. Here's how a covenant works. You have, first of all, the statement of who the Lord is and what he's done for his people, followed by the rules and regulations that are to be followed, and then followed in that by curses and blessings for obedience. So in the Old Testament, of course, you have the archetypal covenantal structure, which is the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God who led you out of Egypt, etc., followed by the commandments themselves, and then blessings and curses, respectively, whether or not the people obey or rebel. The whole book of De Deuteronomy works the same way as well. Well, when you begin to look at each one of the seven letters, this covenantal structure becomes obvious. So first of all, Christ says who he is, and all of this is drawn from the vision that John just saw, this glorious vision of the resurrected and ascended Christ. You know, the Christ with the glowing eyes and the, the white hair and his voice like many waters, etc. So each one of the seven churches, they get a reminder of that vision. That's the statement of the covenantal Lord, followed by an evaluation, which consists of commendations on one hand, and or rebukes on the other, followed then by the promises of life and the warnings of disobedience. So at the same time, you have this chiasmic structure among the letters and covenantal structure within the letters. For more on the book of Revelation, check out our sermon series at Gospel Fellowship PCA on our YouTube channel, channel there, or just stay tuned to my channel where I will also post the sermons in the series. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots. Talk to you later.